My videos are really intended to be more for informative purposes and uh, I don't know what your limitations are but you do. Uh, so my videos assume that you know enough about what you're doing to turn the electricity off before you work on something electrical, turn the water off before you work on something that has to do with your plumbing. Uh, if you're not sure about what you're doing, hire a professional, and if you like the ideas that I present in these videos, then show that to the professional that you hire to do the work for you. But if you're not sure, don't try these things by yourself. I hate to sound like Mythbusters and say don't try this at home, but I think knowledge ought to be free, but on the other hand, it's not my job to protect you from yourself. So, let's get on with the video. I got a message from a viewer after this last video that I posted and he asked a pretty good question really and it was simple why do I think that uh, using electric power to make hot water is better than using a solar water heater that converts sun energy directly to hot water and uh, so I've made this video to try to answer that question why I think that using uh, solar electric power is better to make hot water than using a solar water heater. So first off, uh, when I first got into solar power the cost of solar panels to generate electricity was about eight dollars a watt. Today it's less than one dollar a watt. Uh, when I first got into it, a good inverter was over 3000 Today you can get an even better inverter for about $1,500, $1,600. Charge controllers, you can get maximum power point tracking charge controllers for less than a couple of hundred bucks. Where back then, one that was just a relay that would open and close was a couple hundred bucks. Um, so the technology has advanced quite a bit. The thing that has changed the opposite direction over the last few years is batteries. Batteries have gotten really expensive. Um, today batteries are probably two to three times what they were when I first got into doing alternative energy. Um, so I've had to get more creative to try to find ways to live off the grid. Generating power, fortunately, has become a lot cheaper, but storing that power in the form of electricity is much, much more expensive. So um, there are other ways that we can store the energy that we generate from electricity in the form of hot water, compressed air, this kind of thing. So um, I'm going to try to explain in this video why it really makes a lot more sense to generate hot water from electricity than to use a solar water heater. And let's get to it. If you're on a budget like me, then making every penny count is important. So an important factor in determining what you can do off-grid short of being a millionaire is to think outside the box and not think so conventionally about places to store your power. Batteries are a budget killer, and my batteries are about a third of the size that an engineering company would have designed for me. But thinking outside the box, I've found other places to store energy besides batteries. Compressed air and hot water are two obvious places to store energy. But this brings up more questions. First, how can we automatically apply the power to the next device once the first has reached its full point? 
In other words, if the air in the tank has been compressed to its 150 pound limit and the compressor has switched off, then how do we start heating the water automatically without watching everything and turning on and off switches manually? I want to do all of this automatically. Second, what's the priority of our storage places? For me, hot water is paramount in the house. Then if there's still energy available, it goes to compressed air, then after that to space or air heating in my home. In my two-part series, I show how to heat water with excess electricity, and once the water has reached temperature, the electricity is stored in yet another form. Now to address the question of why to use electricity to heat water instead of just buying a solar water heater or a gas water heater. First, solar water heaters require a backup heat source. Two, solar water heaters do not do well in winter. I know this for a fact because I had one in the 1990s when I lived in New Mexico. It worked great in the summer, but in the winter it made the water almost lukewarm, but still not warm enough to take a shower or a bath in. Gas water heaters cost more than electric. Number four, power from solar water heaters cannot go anywhere else. In other words, once the water has reached its temperature of around 140 degrees, it's simply not going to get any hotter, and there's nothing that you can do with the energy that it could generate past that point. It simply stops. Fifth, solar water heaters are expensive. I've even seen people that have claimed to build a solar water heater for only a few hundred dollars, but a quick look at their scrap pile reveals lots of previous attempts that added up to more costs than if they had just bought a system already developed. So let's put that one to rest. Now money that would have been used for a solar water heater can be used for PV panels instead. Consider this. A solar water heating system can cost over $4,500 to as little as $1,500. But then you still have to buy a gas water heater for backup when there is no sun or you use more hot water than the solar water heater can make. After you've purchased your gas water heater, you have the costs of gas plumbing, propane tank placement, and then the expensive propane bills. I need to outsmart this conventional thinking and think more long term about my future. So instead of paying a total of around $3,000 for a solar water heater with propane backup, I opt to spend $2,000 more for 2,000 watts of photovoltaic panels for electricity. Here's what makes heating water with electricity really go over the top. I only need a couple of hours of that extra two kilowatts of electricity to get my water in the water heater completely hot. The other five hours of electrical generation can now go to other places. In a solar water heater, once the water's hot, it simply stops. There's no more extra energy to do anything with. It simply stops. So now the question is, why would I want to spend my money on the conventional way of thinking when I can have hot water and an extra six kilowatt hours of electricity per day by simply investing my money in another means. I can now store much more usable power, have a smaller battery bank, and I can consume more power during the day so I can run a log splitter, compress air, grinding flour, cooking on a conventional electric stove, and just about any other thing that I can imagine. The beauty of this philosophy is that the charge controller or the inverter takes care of everything automatically. If the water heater is running and I turn on the electric cook stove, the voltage continues to go down until the voltage gets low enough to switch the water heater off. And then when the water heater shuts off, the voltage creeps back up until the voltage is high enough to turn the water heater on again. The water heater, which is used as my load dump, together with the charger and the inverter, become like a shock absorber, always using the maximum power from my panels and directing the excess electricity where it makes the most sense. Since my water heater and my baseboard heaters are resistive loads instead of inductive, where an inductive load 
will be a large motor like uh, an air compressor or a lock splitter that runs off of electricity or even a refrigerator if it's an old model. Uh, the inductive loads can really wreak havoc on s certain inverters that are more cheaply made. But since a water heater, an electric stove, uh, my baseboard heaters, all those are resistive loads. The beauty of that is I can buy one of these cheap Chinese inverters. I don't risk overloading or overheating my main inverter. What's even better is that this cheap inverter is rated at 2500 watts. The manufacturer recommends that you don't exceed 80% of its capacity for continuous duty. My heating elements are 2000 watts, and 80% of this little inverter's capacity just happens to be 2000 watts. I'm right at the 80% continuous rating. It's a perfect match. I spent the same money for photovoltaic panels instead of a solar water heater and gas backup. But now you ask, what about cloudy days for your setup, Steve? Since I use firewood to heat my home, I have a wood stove that I added a stainless steel coil from hilkoil.com for less than $200. I plumbed it into my wood stove with copper flex tubing and inexpensive PEX. Now on cloudy days when I build a fire to heat my house anyway, the byproduct is water in my electric heater gets hot from simply heating my home. Life is good and now my hot water is completely without additional cost and I have much more electricity as a pleasant side effect. That's why I choose electricity to heat water instead of direct sunshine. That's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next week or next month or whenever I get to it. I always answer questions whether posted publicly or privately. See you then.